Hey guys, it is Countess and I am back this evening. So, uh, I am so frustrated right now. Um, earlier in the day, I did sit down and recorded a, an amazing read. Uh, but alas, in trying to clear up the storage in my phone, I ended up deleting that read. So <laughs> I am going to give it a go one more time and we'll see what the cards have to say. Um, ever since we did the standing stone video, my mind has been on the, that negative energy and that that was such a heavy read for me that it's, I've felt residual effects from that reading. Um, I've had just this kind of, I don't know, just something telling me to inquire about the position of Aleister Crowley in this entire story with Billy, um, and the Beatles, you know, uh, obviously the other Beatles were, um, influenced by Crowley as well. So what I want to know and what I'm, I would just want to know what his role or position was with Billy back in those days because we don't know very much at all and so if we can get some insight on that that would be great and I am using a different deck of cards I'm using the Pulp Tarot by Todd Alcott and these are this is my favorite deck of cards by the way amazing beautiful cards that they are very similar to the row I'm sorry, right, Rider Waite Smith um, cards, but they have like Pulp Fiction type drawings just meant for the tarot. Um, and they're just so beautiful and fun to play with. So again, it goes back to that point of using different decks to show that this energy is coming through to us and being told to us no matter what deck of cards is, is used, basically. And that is something that is important in tarot as a form of authenticity as well as, you know, uh, validation and uh, the whole spectrum of things. You know, uh, you should be able to tune in to what you want to discover with any deck, even like the memoir says with a deck of playing cards, you can still do that too. So we're going to see what, what these cards say in this reading. I'm very disappointed that that last reading got lost. I truly am, but we're going to try to tune in to Mr. Crowley. What went on in your head, Mr. Crowley? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, just while I'm shuffling and trying to get in the zone, um, I just want to give a super big thanks to all of the new subscribers to my channel. I'm like totally blown away at how many new subscribers I got in just the last day and a half. And I owe that definitely to uh, Mr. Mike Williams. Shout out to him for posting a couple of my reads on his page. And also thank you to Stephen Faber and John Lennox again uh, for your research and for your due diligence of actually putting in the work and trekking all the way up to the farm to check it out. And um, I believe John said he is going to be at the farm uh, tomorrow. He's going up there. So um, 
I will be definitely on pins and needles to hear about that experience because man, oh man, we have tapped into some dark shit where that standing stone is concerned and it is concerning. That's why I want to tap on to this. You know, I keep thinking about that painting uh, Alistair Crowley made that Stephen uh, deduced was, you know, it was by Crowley in that it looked like it was like a self-portrait, but then in the back, you know, some people say it's like his hair or whatever, but the stone is in the background. So there's a tie to the standing stone with Crowley and that picture, man, oh man, it's hard to deny that that stone is showing up in that picture. I just, that's mind blowing to me. So, and then with all the dark energy from that last reading, hell yeah, there is, I, there's, I just, I have that feeling that there's no doubt that's dark stuff has occurred at that standing stone and I just would like to know what his position was position or relation or whatever to this whole thing so let's get started guys all right <laughs> we start out with the fool woo woo <laughs> Oh, so appropriate. The fool on the hill, running off the hill. We don't know if she's going to fly <laughs> or if she's going to fall flat on her face. That's the whole thing. And we get the chariot reverse. That is another repeat card we've had in the past. Whoop. And I got the ten of wands and the ten of swords together. That just kind of came out. I double grabbed. So let me make sure that everything is in view beautiful and let's give so we have two tens showing a cycle of completion full completion which is funny because the fool is the very first card in the deck <laughs> so that's quite interesting uh, some sort of betrayal or backstabbing going on we shall see, right? This is like as the world turns with tarot. <laughs> oh, we got the world reversed again. That has been another repeat card. We have the Ten of Pentacles. We have the Hermit reversed. Six of Cups, Billy and Childhood right there. Oh, goodness. Okay, as we do, as we do, we're going to shuffle for the third. Wow, I'm already starting to see a pattern here, guys. Oh boy, what is the position of Mr. Crowley? Okay, <laughs> think of the Ozzy Oz, the Black Sabbath song, Mr. Crowley. Ooh, two of cups again. You guys, we got this on the last one with the standing stone. A breakdown in a relationship. The Empress reversed. The Magician. Oh, Lordy Lord. There's lots of major arcanas happening here. Five of Swords. The Magician. Oh, man. I don't. <laughs> the son of the magician, right? Oh, geez. So we start off with the fool. <laughs> and it's very fitting, you know, and even Billy wrote the song, The Fool on the Hill, right? And it's totally, and even memoirs tells us that that is based off of the tarot card. The um, writer Wade Smith uh, fool and but this is very similar very similar to that card um, so we're starting off with an individual who is naive who is innocent who is ready for new beginnings in life who is 
somebody who is ambitious and ready to go. But, but, that person has a lot of self-doubt. That person feels powerless. That person feels like they cannot achieve their goal because of a heavy burden that they are carrying. This card is the card of burden. And it also signals being a 10. We have three tens here in this spread, three of them. So <laughs> that shows that they're in the overall picture, there are three opposing suits, three areas in life life cycles that are approaching ends that are actually coming full circle to completion. And this is a burden taking on everybody and everything working too much, just it's overload. And then paired with the 10 of swords at the end, this is a painful ending. This can signal betrayal. It can signal <laughs> a disaster of some sort happening. So the fool has already is on a path of self-doubt, failure, self-doubt, feeling powerless, carrying, carrying that weight, <laughs> pun intended, and some sort of disaster is in the mix. We go down to the second row, we have the world reversed, which can show that somebody is not accomplishing goals, that there is an emptiness here in the fool. Their corresponding cards, um, it's a failure to move forward. Um, and then paired with the 10 of pentacles, and the chariot above being power, um, having self-doubt and um, just having that failure, sense of failure, it's almost like this Ten of Pentacles is a fake it till you make it kind of card. It shows a completion of material wealth and stability but it also shows pretentiousness and paired with the chariot, it's showing a false sense of satisfaction and stability. <laughs> and then you go next to the hermit reversed. The hermit reversed is showing an individual who is being involuntarily isolated from something. <laughs> so we have burden, we have betrayal, we have the failure to launch, and now we have an unwanted isolation. And then we get to the six. Six of cups, Billy, and it is the card of childhood. So I can deduce all of this stuff relates to the childhood of Billy, of the fool. <laughs> so, I mean, it's also kind of nostalgic. It can be, but for <laughs> the way this is, there is something else. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go down here because we do have the magician and I find that a little bit uncanny that the magician is here because we're talking about the magician and the magician's son, magic with a K, right? And talking about, you know, these partnerships, you have a partnership between these endings of life because it's causing new beginnings. Then we come down to the Two of Cups 
And we have the Two of Cups at the end of the Standing Stone read. It's showing a breakdown of a relationship. That there is misery between two people. There is a duality of some sort that is warped and not good. And with the Empress reversed, we keep getting the Empress either upright or reversed. Is showing a creative block of some sort and no strength. It's just no strength. This person feels powerless. They feel like they just can't. They're lonely. They're exiled. There is a block here and the magician is on the side of it. The magician is causing this burden, this isolation. The magician is able to, he harnesses all the skills. He holds all the suits in his hands. He commands the elements. And if you see, it is a pentacle. We have the um, soul. We have the emotions. We have the spirit, like the creativity. We have the, um, so we have water, fire, and then we have the pentacles. We have, that is the earth. And then we have the swords, which is air, energy. It's all meant out to be a pentacle. He manifests everything. It is turning the spiritual into the material. <laughs> but then the five of swords next to him, it's like, this is like, he's done. The fool is done. The fool is burnt out. The fool is just over it. And he wants to get on with this. He just wants to get on with it and get over this horrible childhood that he had possibly with the magician. So, you know, I want to, I want to pull a couple more cards and just see what we get here. And so we have the Ace of Swords. We have the Knight of Wands reversed. <laughs> we have the Five of Wands reversed. Okay. So, um, hmm. Let's see. So, the Ace of Swords is basically like clear cut. This is a message. You have the clarity and the wisdom and the intellect to move forward and start a new beginning. But the Knight of Wands, who is a charming and usually a charming and bubbly, enthusiastic guy, he ain't feeling it right now. He's blocked. And it is just a struggle. This whole thing, it goes into the burden. The five of wands reversed. It's a struggle. It is just, he is wrestling with everything. Possibly the magician. Um, possibly, um, I don't know, other things. It's conscious. <laughs> um, I don't know if... Um, Oh, let's see, like clear decisions. And then we have, um, you know, the Knight of Wands who is blocked and just can't do anything. And then, so the Five of Wands, it's just, I guess this is actually just, I'm sorry, I'm reading the Five of Wands different. Five of Wands upright is a struggle. It's a, it's a fight reversed 
it's the end of a struggle, the end of a fight. So the knight is probably just burnt out and done. Done and relieved that he doesn't have to think about this anymore. It's suppressed. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. What do you think about that? That's, that's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy to me, you ask. <laughs> Just, okay, I'm going to draw a couple more cards. We have the King of Wands. And then we have the... Oop. Then we have... Oh, my God. Okay. So this changes everything. <laughs> the Hierophant and the King of Wands. The King of Wands is just a man in charge. He has the realm of creativity, of spirit, adventure, of fire he is you can see the fiery building behind him he is strong he is a strong he represents an older man an older man who is strong and who is tied to black magic <laughs> oh my god and magician in the hierophant reverse remember i told you we had the hierophant reversed in another read and it was, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, holy shit. The King of Wands, so the Hierophant reversed. The Hierophant upright is like religion, sacred doctrine, rules, conformity. Reversed it is. It is. It's a signal for black magic. It's blasphemy. It's do as thou wilt, not following the law, the laws or the rules. Conform nonconformity. It is chaos paired with this king. And that's it, guys. <laughs> oh my god. This Alistair Crowley, this is the he had full command over Billy in his childhood. He took the fool and turned him into a broken, burdened person who struggled. He was betrayed and put through torture, torture, ritual abuse. This card signals that 100%. Oh my God. And so I'm going to, oh my God, I'm going to do, and we have the Knight of Swords coming in. So the Knight of Swords is again executing executing command, command of He's, act he's a man of action and motivation. So are we to believe <laughs> that Billy is this man of action and is able to fight with his sword? He is enthusiastic. He is ambitious, determined, and he is going to to be driven for perfection as a result of all of this. Aleister Crowley, Black Magic, the magician, the magician's son. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. What do you think this... So... I mean, it doesn't show the relationship. If we had pulled the emperor, perhaps, maybe the empress reverse shows that 
you know, it was a father figure, but the emperor usually signifies a father and a fatherly figure. The empress is a mother and a motherly figure, but reverse, she's the opposite. So perhaps we can deduce that it is the father. King of Wands is the father of the fool. I'm sorry, I keep getting interrupted, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyways, oh my gosh, I am totally wigging out. This is amazing. <laughs> oh my God. The son of the magician, the king of the of Cosmania. Yes. Oh wow. He is ready to be the man because of everything else. We even have the Knight of Wands reversed. Two knights in the reading. I'm actually not too sure what two knights signifies. I'm going to be honest with you there. Um, I would assume it's messages. Well, no, pages carry messages. The knights execute the messages. But again, this knight is blocked from doing that. Blocked from ambition, powerless and burdened and tortured all by the king of wands, the magician, and the black magic and blasphemy attached to his childhood, this broken relationship with this man and the fool. Oh my God. Okay. I've got to, whew, I am, wow. Oh, let me get an oracle deck real quick. I want to get a deck to clear this because this is pretty intense you guys I cannot I cannot believe these cards are coming up like seriously I am what do you guys think please 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 like tell me in the comments I am I just yeah we get answers all you have to do is ask all you have to do is you know, believe the process and believe <laughs> that the information esoterically, it's not that hard to read. It's not that hard to see what they mean. And you, you know, wow, wow, wow. This is another one for the books, you guys. I, okay, we had a, a, a jumper. <laughs> These are like fortune cookie cards, so. When going through tough times, it is important to remember that nothing up, nothing up to this point has defeated you. You've overcome challenges before. Be kinder to yourself and be thankful for all that you already have. There you go. Oh boy, so this was a very intense read again, and wow, I love this deck. Beautiful cards for a horrible situation, and Billy comes out ready, ready for action and ready to execute what he's been programmed for, what he's been tortured for. Um, wow. I'm, <laughs> yeah. So that is it for me, guys. This is done. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I need to go and kind of relax now. I'm going to edit this video and I will send it out because my mind once again is blown and Thank you all so much for your support. I really mean it. And if you could just throw a little like, maybe subscribe to my channel. Um, again, I'm so very appreciative of all of the new subscribers. So if you guys have any suggestions of topics regarding this, you know, the memoirs or the McCartney um, conspiracy, 
please just hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you guys later. Bye. Alistair Crowley, the man who called himself the Beast 666, black magician, drug fiend, sex addict,